Yeah. Yeah. What's good? What's good? What's good, y'all? Welcome and welcome and welcome to the Life Dreamer Podcast. So glad that you are able to be a part of this particular uh, episode and not just episode, but series. Uh, I'm doing something special. I'm doing something special for y'all. Uh, hopefully, y'all can hear me good. I'm uh, trying to work this microphone here and Hopefully it's picking me up good. I don't want to be all up in the mic like this. Uh, so, but yeah, we got a, a great episode coming for you. A great series uh, called, let me see. I got to make sure I get my notes. Uh, this is going to be our undraped series. And um, the undraped series is, it takes a, a, a bunch of different experiences that uh, I've had in a barbershop. And as y'all already know how I do on the Life Grooming Podcast, uh, we find God's truth in those. So let me just give you a, a, a quick intro to who I am in that world. I don't really speak about it much, but uh, I'm a barber from upstate New York. I've been cutting for like 18 years now. I've been teaching for like the past five, five and a half years or so, uh, barbering specifically. Uh, my dad was a barber. My brother's a barter. Barter. My brother's a barber. Uh, shout out to J.O., uh, the one you forgot about on IG. That's actually his IG name, the one you forgot about. Uh, he's a barber uh, up in the 518. Um, my cousin Mark, shout out to Mr. Mark uh, back in the 518. He taught me how to cut hair. Um, and I've been around hair for a long time, honestly. Um, my, Like I said, my dad was a barber. And growing up in the barbershop, um, he did not want me to cut hair, believe it or not. If my dad was alive today, I think he'd be laughing uh, at my career uh, because of the fact that not only am I a barber, but I'm a barber educator on top of that. And I remember him telling me as a kid, he was like, you're not going to be no barber. You're going to be a, a lawyer or a judge or something, something like that you can retire from. Mind you, he's telling me this as a barber, you know, and I grew up in the era that you you didn't, you know, you ain't say everything that come to your mind because my dad had this ability. I think he was a superhuman. He had the ability to know what I was thinking. And I remember one time I got smacked in the mouth for something I thought I, I did not say. I promise you, I did not say out loud to my father, shut up. Cause that would have been my life. I, there would be no podcast. Okay, I, I, I'd be dead. I'd be a, a pot of ash. That's what I would be. I would not. There would be no podcast. All right. But I said it in my head, and my dad smacked me in my mouth, and he said, "And that's for what you're thinking." And I'm like, "How did he? I didn't. I, I didn't say nothing." So, needless to say, when he told me that uh, I wasn't going to be a barber because I needed to have a job where I could retire from. In my head, I'm thinking, but bro, you, you're a barber, so why don't you do something different? But nevertheless, here I am uh, years later from that point, because I was like maybe like six or seven at the time. But I've been in a barbershop since I was a kid, man, like a little, little kid. Spent my Saturdays in there. Um and started working for Paul Mitchell Company about five, six years ago as an instructor in uh, Schenectady, New York. And as the Lord would have it, here I am down in the Dallas, Texas area, now for about a year or so, still teaching at a Paul Mitchell Barber School. Uh, I've been blessed to travel a little bit within the States um, and teach as a national educator for Paul Mitchell Systems, John Paul Mitchell Systems teaching barbering and things of that nature. Um, so needless to say, I have had a lot of time inside of a shop and salons uh, because a lot of my national education classes uh, are in salons. Few of them are, are in barbershop. Well, I should say were. Thank, thank, thank you, Rona. Thank you, Rona. Because a brother didn't get no classes in 2020. Just saying. You owe me a whole salary. I'm just saying. But anyway, um, so, yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time in both shop and salons because of my regular nine to five inside of a barbershop school. But then um, 
and the Salah. So, you know, God is interesting. He's interesting in how he deals with, with me. Um, I like to tell people that uh, I'm not 100% there. Like, I'm crazy. And that's cool, but it's certified. All right, just level one, though. No straight jackets needed. I don't even need no medication. I just own my crazy. All y'all crazy. Everybody got a little crazy, all right? I just ain't ashamed of mine, okay? And the Lord uses that. So he'll talk to me and use just the most craziest things to do so. Uh, so these next uh, maybe nine or so podcast episodes will be dedicated to truths that God has given me uh, about me, about life, about people, as it relates to my experience in a barbershop. So whether you're a barber or a stylist or just a patron of a beauty salon or a barbershop, you'll be able to relate to these. Um, and I hope that they bless you. I hope that they speak well to you. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's just, that's a little bit about me, man. I, 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 that's, that's just what I want to give you. So we're going to hop right into uh, our first topic uh, of this series. Uh, so I guess I'll probably call this one um, maybe uh, maybe intro consultation. But we're going to talk about consultation because I just told you what we're going to talk about. So I got my notes, you know, just a, a few notes. Y'all can't really, those of y'all that are just listening and not watching a YouTube video, I just... You know, you can't see what I just did. Watch the video as well. You know, get some inside scoop and stuff. You know. uh, so we're going to talk about constant. Let me grab my notes real quick. Um, so, all right. So um, when you, uh, when we go into the you know, barbershops, and I'm going to say barbershop a lot because it's just my experience. So all y'all stylists out there who's listening, don't be getting offended and, and you know, sending me no message because I didn't say Salon, all right. I'm a barber, all right. So I'm gonna say barbershop a lot. But uh, when you go into barbershops, honestly, a lot of times you kind of hear this conversation that happens a lot. Hey, yo, what's good, fam? All right, all right. Uh, which you good? Got you? Yeah, all right. Come on to the chair. Do come sits down in the chair. <laughs> and uh, I, what you getting today, man? Guy might say something like, Yeah, let me get like a uh. Let me get a fade with a two on the top. Okay, that's pretty good. You might get some that'll be like, yo, you know what? Uh, whatever looks good. Get those. But then you get some that'll be like, yeah, like, I just want you to take a little bit off right here uh, and just a little bit off here. Just, you know, take some off, but not too much. Those are the worst. The, yeah, take, just take a little bit off. But not too much, but I want, you know, make it look good. You know, clean it up. Make it look neat. My mans, what do you want me to do? That doesn't tell me anything. I cannot stand how many times I would hear people be like, yeah, just take a little bit off, you know, just clean it up. And they act like they trust you with what you're going to do. And don't get the one client who doesn't have the patience to answer more questions because then they get an attitude because you're trying to find out what they want. So let's roll with the person that'll be like, yeah, just take a little bit off. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, not too much off, but a little bit, you know, uh, and you're like, what's a little bit? Because a little bit to you and a little bit to me might not be the same thing. So how about we figure this out? So what happens? You go in, you know, do this cut. And you finessing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm working it. I'm looking good, line them up real good, all right, and you know, edge them up, clean them up, little snip, snip, and, and we good to go. Pass my man the mirror, and then he give you one of these looks. Now, when the shoulder drop like that, and the head go back a little bit, that lets you know right there, it is about to go down. My man is not happy. And... You got to ask yourself the question, who has the right to have an attitude in this moment? The client or the barber? Because we I asked you what you want. You hit me with the, you know, just take a little bit off, but leave this here. 
die. Well, I'm gonna roll with that. And the problem is, and these type of exchanges, we get uh, unclear expectations and we get unspoken expectations. And now I, the barber, am supposed to be able to understand what you, the client, had going on in your head. I ain't no mind reader. That's why I'm asking you the questions. But in the same breath, as a professional, it's my job and my duty to make sure I know exactly what you want. And sometimes clients don't really know what they want. They, they have a picture in their head. They don't really know exactly how to explain it. Uh, it might be a picture that they seen on, you know, on IG or in a movie or wherever the case may be, or this look that they're trying to go for, but they don't really have a name for it. And I get it. That's like walking into your doctor's office and you, you know, you tell the doctor like, Hey, look, so I got this thing going on and it sounds like <coughs> when I walk, but then it feels like <coughs> when I sit down. And the doctor has to take all of that and be like, oh, okay, you have a structured and, and broken invertebrate something or other. And he says these words that you have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. And then when you give him that look like, then he's like, we just have to give you a few medications and you'll be good to go. It, your back itches. Oh, oh, okay. All right, cool. Thanks, doc. Appreciate it. It's one of those type of situations where... You as the professional, you know what's going on or the barber knows what's going on and you have to translate that type of situation. So you find fault on both sides from the stylist barber uh, to the client. So you might say, OK, so what does this have to do with God? What 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 what, what truth do you have in that? Uh, it's quite simple. This is something that, that God really helped me understand about me. Uh, it's about clarity. It's it's about understanding. It's about vision. It's about preparation. See, when I teach my students the art of consultation, I teach them that it's absolutely important for you to understand what your client wants for a few reasons. One, to make sure that you give them exactly what they want. Two, to make sure you set the right expectation because a dude can come into the shop wanting his haircut but if you ain't got enough hair, like this is the barber shop, not Bosley. All right. For those who don't know what Bosley is, Bosley is a company that does hair implants. OK, I ain't here to put hair on your head, my mans. All right. I'm here to help shape what you got and what you want right here. Yeah, we about 15 years too late. And I'm not about to pour eight pounds of fiber and paint on your head to make it look like this. OK, so you want to be able to give the right expectation to the client. Uh, if they can't get it, you want to talk to them about the health of their hair, all these type of things. The most important part of the interaction between the hair professional and the client is the consultation. Hands down, it's the most important part because it sets up everything else in that experience. And as a professional, as a barber and as an educator, I teach and I know and I've and I live that I don't sell haircuts. I don't I don't sell shaves. I don't sell products. I sell experiences. I, I, I sell emotions. I, I sell feelings because a person's hair is literally an extension of who they are, but it's also an expression of their emotion and it's my job to make sure that I'm helping to shape their emotion or the emotion that they're trying to get to through their hair. And I'm the one who's supposed to know as the professional, I'm the one that's supposed to know what's going on. So consultations are all about preparation. It's about clarity. It's about vision. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, uh, with all that getting, getting, get an understanding. And what it simply means is that you have to be willing to take the time to know what you know, to, to feel what you feel. And just like in the scenario of the barbershop, when you got that client that comes and sits down and he's like, hey, yeah, just take a little bit off here, take a little bit off there, you know, make it look good, but don't take off too much. That is the worst consultation you could possibly ever get. And for those of you that are not on the side of the chair where I stand, but you're the one sitting in the chair, do all of us a favor and 
give us a little bit more than take a little bit off, please. Th th thank you, appreciate it. Okay, uh, because you as a client, you're walking in with an expectation in your mind. You have a vision in your head and you expect the professional to be able to replicate it, but you haven't given good conversation. You haven't set out a good set of instructions or desires. And so what happens is you embark on this journey of transformation without clear direction. And how often do we do that in life? That we're in the middle of this journey we call life. And when we look around, it's like, what the heck? I don't, what did I, don't, it wasn't just two weeks. I, how did I get here? And you got to ask yourself the question, did I ask myself the right questions? I can't tell you how many times in life I made decisions without counting the costs. I, 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 I made choices and, and did not tally it up. Um, so there's this Bible scripture, Luke chapter 14, uh, verse 25 through 34. But I really just want to focus in on two particular verses. <clears throat> verse 28 is Jesus talking. He says, so suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Verse 31 says, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? Jesus is like, yo, isn't it logical to ask yourself questions and consider the cost of what you're about to get into. And that's that's the takeaway of the consultation is what questions are you asking? What what assessments are you making to make sure that this transformation that you're about to endure will be as successful as possible? Sure, things may come along that you you just can't plan for. But everything else, you have to be as prepared as possible. Uh, there's a scripture in Proverbs. It's the 16th chapter of Proverbs. All of it is good. I suggest you read it all. Um, but the gist of that particular chapter is this. Make a plan. It's okay to have one. It's in your heart. But it's God who's going to give the final answer. Why not? He knows life way better than you do. But it's okay to plan. You actually should. So it's it's important that you that you are asking yourself questions. And that's the mistake I used to make a lot. I went in all heart, like all heart, all emotional and very little, if any, logic. And then I'm trying to figure out why my life is as crazy as it was. Man, look, I don't even know if there's enough podcast space on the Internet to go through all of the different things that I could have and should have done differently had I taken the time to count the cost to have a consultation with myself. And just like the scenario of the client who comes in, who doesn't give a good explanation, good vision of what they desire and the barber who doesn't do a good job of finding out what they want, getting that picture out of their head and into the barber's head, because that's really what a consultation does. It brings clarity to what's going on up here. I'll say it again. A consultation brings clarity to what's going on up here because you, the client, you see what's going on here. The barber doesn't. So our verbal communication brings the invisible to visible. Just like life, consultations bring what's inside, internally, invisible, tangibly, visible, externally. But you got to ask the right questions. Some things you just ain't going to be able to do. Some things we can get to, but we have to take a, an extra route. So I got to ask you this question. When was the last time you did a consultation? And when you did, was it a good one or was it a bad one? Bad consultations, they're not 
really informative. They're not fully detailed. They're quickly rushed. You're not really paying all the attention that you need to. A good, good consultation takes the time to ask questions that are not just the obvious. Like a good question that someone could ask you in the shop is, so what do you do for a living? That's a great consultation question because it answers a bunch of things about typically what's going on with your hair, how much time it takes you to prepare your hair, uh, how you may need to wear it based off of where you work. Questions that are not the obvious, but dig deep to the source are usually some of the best questions to ask yourself. So I'm gonna leave you with this, all right? Scripture is Psalm 37, four says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart, all right? I'm gonna make sure I, I said that one right because I always get my numbers mixed up on that one. I don't know why, I do not know why, but I'm gonna make sure, make sure I said that right. I mean, make sure I gave you the right numbers for that one. Uh, y'all know how I do. I'll be uh just giving it as it comes out. Um, using my phone. Yeah, thirty-seven four. I was right. Yeah, you you can't be on here uh quoting no Bible and be quoting it wrong. Okay, forget people canceling you. I ain't trying to have God cancel me. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I call at least right. All right, so I'm gonna have to double check just in case I didn't script it down in my brain and memorize it. But Psalm 37, four, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. What that means is as you continue to give yourself to God, he will tell you what you should desire. He'll literally give you the desires that should be in your heart. It doesn't mean that he's going to give you whatever you want. It means that he'll give you the things that you should be asking for. That's like the ultimate cheat code. All right. It's it's the it's the dad who says, hey, um, so your birthday is coming around. Um, you think you uh, might want to ask me where we're going today? It's that type of scenario. So I'm leaving that with you because we're talking about asking the right questions, it's about having the right questions. It's about taking the time before we get into this life journey of transformations. And even if you're already in the journey, it's never too late to stop where you are. Give a consultation to yourself. Ask these questions. Figure out where you are, where you want to go. Consultations also help us identify the problems and challenges that are already present. Because you cannot give a proper solution if you do not identify the actual problem. So you might already be in the middle of these transformative experiences in life. And you don't really know why you're experiencing these problems. You just know the problems. So we can get to the solutions. You need both. You need to be able to identify the problems and you need to be able to identify the solutions. Okay. So no matter where you are in the middle of the transformation, about to start one or at the end of one, consultations always fit. And they're most, 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 most important part of this journey. Look, that's my time with you. All right. So I'm about to, you know, get out of here. But I hope that this podcast is uh, is helpful to you. And I'm excited, man. We got a, We got a few more of these to do. Like I said, this is our undraped series. So these next few are going to center around kind of stuff like this. Yeah, a little creative type of move on. Yeah, you know I mean, um, sometimes it's going to be super driven um, by a lot of experience in a barbershop. Sometimes it'll be super driven by scripture. Sometimes it'll be a little bit of both. And I don't know, sometimes it'll be real, whatever falls in between those. I don't know. Nevertheless, um, I'm excited for it. And I'm, I'm excited for you to get it. Take all that applies to you. And um, I'll see you on the next one around. So get up off of this podcast episode and go watch another one of mine. All right. Peace.